The new version of Brixforge comes with new features that many of you guys have been waiting for. We talk about animation controls. Now you can create impressive GSAP animations without having to create a JavaScript object. With the new form submissions, you can collect all incoming submissions clearly in the database. We have added new ProForms fields that will be very useful. One of them is the new Calculator field. With the new brick slider events for the panel, you can now control your native brick sliders even better. And there is much more that we have added. In this video we want to show you only the highlights. You can get a full overview in the changelog. Instead of having to fill a JavaScript object, you can now use the new controls to create your animation. You can find different controls in different categories. For each control, you can make additional settings, for example, define the unit. This makes it very easy for you to control the animation exactly the way you want it to be. By the way, you can still use the JavaScript object as well. In the end, we are merging the inputs, so there are no limits for you. If you want to see what code is generated by the controls, you can view the object by clicking on the code icon. I'm sure you will have a lot of fun to play with the new animation controls. If you have enabled form submissions in the Bricksforge settings, a new action create submission is available in the ProForms element. If you set this, the submissions of your forms will be stored in the database. You can make different settings here. Enter the form title to give your form an individual name in the submissions table. You can also set a maximum number of submissions that can be saved. As well as rules to avoid duplicates. In our example, I don't want users to be able to submit with the same email address. For each rule, you can create a unique message. Yeah, we already see a notification appear on Bricks that there is a submission we haven't seen yet. In the table you have many possibilities. You can display a detailed view, change the order of columns, show or hide columns, resize the width permanently or switch between your different forms. Let's try to submit the form again with the same email address. That should not work now. Great, this is the error message we had entered. The validation works. To test the submission limit functionality, I've just added 5 submission entries. If you remember, we have set the limit to a maximum number of 5. By adding an additional submit logic, we can now also control that the submit button is not even clickable if the limit of the submissions is reached. This is what we want to do now. And we can add an alternative text here as well.
As you can see, no more submissions are possible because the limit has been reached. By the way, you have also the possibility to use a full text search or to export your entries as CSV. In the ProForms element, we have added new actions and fields. Besides the new action Update User Meta, you can now use the fields Heading, Divider, and the new field Calculation. In this video, I want to show you the field Calculation in more detail. With this field, you have the possibility to create complex mathematical formulas using the user input as values. In our example, we multiply the number of tickets by the unit price of the selected course to get the total amount. For the output, you can make different settings. For example, that the number should be output in a currency format. When I select the course and change the number of tickets, you see that the calculation in the total field works well. By the way, you can now also define initial values for your fields and use the syntax inside the select fields to separate key and value. But what if we want to separate the output of the calculation from the form to display it elsewhere? No problem, you can even continue to calculate with the result. First activate only remote, this will convert the input field in the form to a hidden input. After that you can use the new dynamic data tag form calculation to display the results. This tag requires the ID of your calculation field. Yeah, and as you can see, the result is now displayed there. But the dynamic data tag accepts some more arguments. With these you can continue calculating with the calculated value. In our example, at one point I multiply the result by 0 0.19 to get a VAT. And in the sum below, I multiply by 1.19 to output the total. Yeah, and now we have a great form with the calculated values on the right side. Amazing. With the new slider events, you can control your native sliders like a pro. For example, syncing sliders has never been easier. Let's sync the slider together. Just create a new event on page load and choose as action sync sliders. Enter the IDs of the sliders you want to sync. Done. There is nothing more to say. Let's take a look to the brick slider events. You can find them in the panel under events. For example, we could now start the GSAP timeline as soon as the current slide changes. So you can animate your slider with GSAP from now on. Let's create a simple example.
I've created the timeline before. It's just a very simple blur effect. Yeah, that's it. And it looks amazing. You see how easy it is to animate your brick sliders. Yeah, this was a small preview of what you can expect in Bricks Forge version 097. How do you like this version? I would be very happy to see your feedback in the comments. See you next time.